Freezer House. It is the Fraser House, your Christian music podcast. Yeah. With Brandon Bailey and Mike Rathke. Episode four, man. I know. This thing is hard to believe. Flying by. (laughs) Yeah. Flying by. And look what we've already done. A couple episodes get people used to who we are. You know, so if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the Fraser House. Yep. On every platform. Right? Yep. And I know you always like to say that little bell. Hit that hit that little bell. Gotta hit the little little bell. Subscription. Little notifications, right? Um, really exciting. So we had last episode. If you haven't checked out, you gotta go back and watch it. Yeah. The the magnificent mustache was on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the mustache and his Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. As he would say, he sprouted from the mustache. Yeah. <laughs> the mustache actually came first. Yeah, that was awesome. That, that was a great episode yeah. with Jeremy Schaefer, Earth Groans, um, great group. Today I'm really excited. Yeah. Really excited. Yeah. Me I don't too. geek out, you know, coming from the music business. You don't we don't get like the like I, I want to say like the celebrity artist shock. Yeah. I got a little shocked with this one. Yeah. It wasn't until I heard the music. And then I started listening to the interviews of this person, and I'm going, "Wow, a lot, so of, a lot real of depth as it gets. there." Yeah. And what is the what was it you said? You said he is the of the. He's like a worship leader of worship leaders. Like that's big. You know, yeah. To me, he's always. I mean, this. Well, we haven't said the name yet, but we have Young Oceans. We have Eric Marshall from Young Oceans. Yeah. I I first came across Eric and uh, the, the the Young Oceans band, like the, their music, and I think it was around 2012. Um, I found their album. They they released an album on Noise Trade. Okay, and so I used to scour Noise of Trade course. for Who like new yeah. music back in the day. And like, I came across this, and I'm like, oh my goodness, what is what am I listening to? <laughs> it's just like uh, I think the song that really hit me was Vid- I think it's Vidia Vidiaquam. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. But, okay, I'll have um, to clarify that with him. Yeah, but man, I mean, I, I listened to that thing like constantly, just looped it for like months, and. Uh, it's just great. It's just, it's a really great. So I, every every album that's come out, I've always looked forward to it, and it's been a staple in my listening. For and sure. his music is all over Praiser, and yeah. so if people don't know Praiser, that's our main sponsor. Praiser is a Christian music streaming platform app, yep. so you can go on, download the app, get ready because you got you got pre pre register. So praiser dot com forward slash register. Make sure you guys get pre registered for the new upcoming app, and make sure you download it to have a little taste of the music. Now we've got Eric waiting for us. Yeah, and I just want to jump on to talk to this to this conversation. I mean, we got to, t- to talk to him just briefly before, you know, kind of yeah. the backstage noise. And the guy's the guy, the guy has got a career in acting, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, let's go talk to Eric. Eric, welcome to the Fraser House, man. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, dude, this is exciting. We, we You're welcome here anytime. And thanks for joining us today. It's uh, post, post Thanksgiving. Do you guys have a good Thanksgiving up there in Nashville? Good. We had a solitary Thanksgiving, just me and my wife and our three kids. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, family man, so you got to tell us the ages because that's that's a houseful. Yeah, I have two girls. They're ten and seven, and our little guy is four. So two girls and a boy. So how does how does he does he look up to them? He's like, does he kind of follow his sister's leads, or is he is he yeah. kind of on his own? Yeah, and he's you know having two girls and then a boy. I don't I don't know what if, if you guys have kids what their you know genders are, but. We got used to having two meek little girls that like to just talk with one another and, you know, <laughs> maybe with their dolls, their dolls talk, you know, yeah, sure. and then boys just smash and destroy things. So, <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty um, accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, just kind of learning that I, I myself never had any brothers. I had three sisters. So I can I'm kind of watching myself as, as he grows up. It must have been how I was. Um, so it's a trip, man. But I love to wrestle with him and. And oh, yeah. crazy, but it's yeah, ca- we, awesome. it's kind of fun too. Like uh, I, I think I was I was listening to uh, this John Mark McMillan interview, and he was talking about having kids, and he's like, you get to relive your childhood through through <laughs> yeah. the eyes of your kid. And I'm like, oh, that's so true, because he's talking about how like kids, like they can find entertainment in a stick, and it's like, oh, I got a sword, you know, and it's like. Yeah. And I'm like, man, that's so true. Like Charlie, like my youngest, I got, I have three. I have a 2017 and a six year old. Oh but wow! But it's like those those moments where you're just out playing with your kid and you see them discover something new. It's like you get to relive that childhood all over again. Yeah. Absolutely. It's my re- reliving my childhood is through a dog right now, so it's <laughs> it's it's definitely a challenge. You know. Uh, anyhow. I have to plug that. Finnegan, I'll be home soon. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> so we want to, look, we, you know, we, we talked to you about the podcast and what we're doing. And, and as a Christian music podcast, yeah, we focus on the music. 
But we really want to focus on the person. You know, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. We're all children of God. And I think it comes to a point where, you know, you kind of stop and you go, wow, this music's crazy. And this guy's going to come on and interview, interviewed by us. But then you really start to break down the person. Yeah. And you go, wow, there's a lot more that I didn't know. Oh, yeah. You know, and Eric, I want to say, man, there was an interview Mike introduced me to uh, your all of your content. And there's an interview you talked about when people ask you what genre of music you're in. Because people may not know Young Oceans. We've got a pretty big audience out there, and they've never heard of you. How would you describe your genre of music, Young Oceans? It will kind of go back a little bit to like where you got started in those things. Sure, yeah. I've, uh, I've for years struggled to, to offer up an elevator pitch for this music because one of the goals that I had when we first started was to make sure that it maybe was doing something you know, new and new and different. Um, but the best, the best kind of category that I've come up with, um, is just calling it prayer music. I like to call it that, uh, simply because I really think well, one of the beauties of the art form in general, and you guys know this being in music is that, um, unlike a visual artist who where you have, you know, if you're painting, if you're painting a canvas, once it's done, that's all you have, and that's all that work will ever be known as. Whereas music is this kind of living idea because you have the recorded form and you have the live form. Well, that is, that's true for any, any recording and performing artist, but it's particularly interesting with worship music when you're crafting lyrics and melodies not just for you to sing or record, but but to hopefully, or maybe you know, if you're called to it, or if it's something that just kind of works out this way, maybe others are going to do those songs as well. Other other groups and other worship leaders, and so the songs have to be really malleable. Like for some, these songs I've come to learn that they look at them as contemplative and sort of yeah. they put it out in the background, which at first offended me. <laughs> <laughs> People would say like, yeah, you know, put it on and just go to sleep, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, and then I started to realize, actually, that's really sweet. Like people just have different ways of praying, you know, different ways of worshiping. In fact, um, for some, what feels epic and, and authoritative might actually feel contemplative and meditative, you know. Yeah, uh, good point. And so that's that's been something that's just been really cool to to learn. So I call it prayer music because I think that prayer is a really um, wide idea. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really that's that's a great point. And I think it's also like I've noticed in music and seeing like the young artist, uh, you know, get to a senior, if you will, in their career. And there's like this maturation process that takes place and they do, they finally identify, like they don't go, like you said, you, you said the nail on the head. You didn't like, I'm going to like, okay, I'm gonna put this press kit together. It's going to meet this mold. It's going to fit this category. And it's like mm-hmm. in that interview that I listened to you, I, I, I was just completely silent and I was just listening. I was just like watching Eric Marshall. And you said, I don't want to leave my music stamped to a certain date or an era. I maybe not say that correctly, but that you sure. it basically encapsulates what you were saying there. I'm like, yeah, I mean, this guy's wise. I mean, just yeah. a, what a totally refreshing perspective on music and yeah. the craft as itself. I, I like that. I like that phrase or that term, uh, prayer music, because it, to me, it's like it's it's a broader. It fits a broader range. Like worship music. I mean, worship music is like what is worship music? It's music that you're worshiping God with. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about prayer, there can be worship within prayer. There can be praise within prayer. There can be contemplation within prayer. I think that I think that's a better. I don't know. I think maybe we're just, maybe you just created a new genre of music. <laughs> it's like, well, to combine what what you were just saying, Brandon. I mean, the the another thing that I can't, to say that I discovered it is completely not true. To to say that I've sort of realized it is is more appropriate. But like, none of us are doing anything new. Sure. You know, the the Psalms are still mm. our our template and our our sort of precedent, right? So. Mm-hmm. Um, I've actually come to sort of realize that like, maybe, maybe that's what all of us that have this itch or this calling, the thing that we kind of have to do, um, when it comes to prayer music, worship music, whatever it's called, I think that we're just being called to continue to be those, those, those psalmists, you know, mm-hmm. the scribes or like those torchbearers of, of that psalmist heart, because, 
the precedent of the Psalms is that there's such a huge variety mm. of postures and experiences and, and things that actually really offend, you know, like, mm. uh, as you guys know, as, Mike, as a worship leader, like, there's a lot of stuff that we wouldn't dare to put into a happy right. major song. Yeah. Like we actually limit ourselves compared to what what these ancient guys used to do with poetry. Absolutely. So it's just so much more to mine yeah. uh, in the past, I think. And and I think that's what that's what attracted me to to Young Ocean's music was it it kind of it veers into some of those territories that you just don't necessarily hear a lot in 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 contemporary Christian music, you know. But like you said, the, man, the Psalms like I just a couple months ago went through their psalms that I like Brandon and I will listen to audio Bible and we kind of pitch back and forth. Oh, I'm in here right now. I'm right here. Yeah. But I went through the psalms and like, and it's just a re- good reminder because there's times when David's like praying to God, he's like bust his teeth out in his mouth, Lord. <laughs> That's like you just yeah. there's some really like like what you said like you would never think to put that into a, a worship song, but that's what the psalms are. They're songs. They're prayers to God, poems to God, and man, there's. He he didn't. A lot of the psalmists they didn't they didn't mince words. Like they just said what they meant. And I and I I genuinely appreciate that because, you know, we live in a real world with real flesh bodies, and sometimes we go through real hard stuff. And it's like there's we need a way to vocalize that. And as as worship leaders or prayer leaders or whatever, like man, that's that's a what an opportunity to be able to give voice to some things that people might be going through. And you know, I don't know. I think that's that's majorly important. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we're stewards, right? It takes me back to Matthew as I listen to you guys and sowers of seed, and it, like all of the seed, not just like a part of yeah. the seed, like all of the seed, you right. know. And you guys, I, I love that, and that's one that that's that's the reason we created the Praiser House. Really, was that yeah, we're gonna talk about music, we're gonna have fun, but we're gonna hope to bring like t- bring out our faith, let it permeate through our pores, and hope to encourage others, yeah. you know, through that. And who knows, by you talking how you're wordsmithing your lyrics, you might have the next young Eric Marshall or next young Oceans type band be listening or watching this and go, if it wasn't for that guy right. standing up and putting the flag down and yeah. saying, hey, we're going to put we're gonna put scripture and lyric. Yeah. Like, look, come on, guys. Yeah. So, all right, Eric, so now now that we've gotten to the heavy stuff already, right out of the gate, man, I love this stuff. Like, I knew yeah. this was going to happen when we got Eric on. Like, like, let's, <laughs> let's just go. So, originally from New York, though, right? You're a New York kid? Um, Philadelphia is where I'm from originally, but my wife and I lived in New York for 11 years uh, after college. Very cool. Where did you go to school? What's your alma mater? Grove City College, north of Pittsburgh, PA. Okay, okay. And how was that experience in New York? You know, I told you offline I have a brother in Brooklyn, but uh, how was that that time in New York for y'all? Uh, it was it was transformative. Uh, nice. I mean, in, in every way. We we had a different kind of experience. Most people, when they do the New York thing, go there single. You know, they're they're pursuing a new career or maybe school. Yeah, um, from there. My wife and I went to New York as a married couple, and so. Um, we, our, our experience was just different than, than a lot of people. Um, she went there for, for work. She was in the fashion design world, and that was always her dream to be in New York. Uh, I was a bit indifferent um, because I had moved a lot growing up. I was kind of like, yeah, great, fine, let's go to New York. We'll see. <laughs> um, so I was actually surprised that, that it really got, it got a, it became a part of me, and I really look at New York as like my home now, hmm. uh, which is which is just crazy. Um, I like to say that I became an artist for the first time in New York City. Um, and and I believe me, I was I thought I was an artist long before that. Um, <laughs> but I think New York really broke me in a way um, that I hadn't experienced before. It was such a hard um, city to just to just even do anything, you know, like, um, I don't need to go into it, but like, it's just a challenging city unless you have a ton of money. Um, and we didn't, um, and, um, but we learned to love it. And probably, um, the most amazing gift of New York for us was getting involved with a church family. The church, um, was, and still is called Trinity Grace Church. It was a family of churches. Um, and I became one of their worship leaders and I was doing pop music at the time, playing in a band, and we had, we were kind of doing the thing, like the indie rock thing. And one of the music directors pushed me into um, trying my hand at writing 
church music or worship music. And, and that was kind of the beginning of what became my, my new passion. Um, and so mm. without New York and without that church and without that, that music director, a friend, and I, a friend of mine named Alf, who was a classical guy, nice. my life would have been very different. So, um, and from there, um, we ended up starting a family, had three kids. And at, at the end of 11 years of just kind of the grind of New York, we, we really kind of wanted frankly, just a bit of a respite. And that's why we're in Nashville now. Um, but it was an incredible time. Yeah. But you said it, the the grind. And a lot of people don't know, I, my brother lives been there for 12 years, uh, maybe yeah. longer, maybe 14 years. And um, I have a lot of friends and, and industry acquaintances there. And I've managed a band that lives in New York City. Um, yeah. It is not an easy gig at all. It no. is, when you said grind, like, I think all of those words should come out as a capital with like emphasis, like G R I N D grind. Well, that's amazing. Thank you for telling us about that. I mean, no one, I, I would have not picked that up in an article or a press write up about you to say that, hey, if it wasn't for Alf and Trinity, that Eric Marshall would not have Young Oceans or be writing Christian music. I mean, it's so incredible. Was that, was that the forming of, of Young Oceans? Is that kind of when that came about? Um, kind of. So, so we began doing church records, and our the first couple church records were that. We're kind of the the typical like an old hymn with a chorus that we wrote, you know, and would tack on, and and they were cool. They were nice. People were digging them, um, but we still hadn't really found um, any kind of new zone. Um, and I had been I had been writing writing and writing and got really into into it. Um, and actually, Young Oceans, um, the first the first record was actually those those with exception of two or three of the songs on that first record. Those songs had been previously recorded by Trinity Grace, oh, cool. uh, and the Young Oceans thing just came about as an opportunity for um, like I got together with some friends and um, an investor kind of said like Hey, why don't you go and make a record on your own how you want to make? And I tried to talk him out of it because I was just too tired and I was like ah, I can't I've already recorded these songs, <laughs> but he he sensed in me that actually. Um, I, I, I knew that at that point we hadn't really, we hadn't really captured those songs in a way that felt right to me, that mm-hmm. felt, that felt true. I, let's put it this way. I didn't want to listen to it when we got done with those church records yeah. as nice as they were. Um, I, it just wasn't my thing, you know? So this guy came along and said, Hey, why don't you go do your thing? And, and so I took him up on it. And so we made that first record that there was no name for the project. There was no, there was really no goal other than let's just go make something that we enjoy. It was a truly an artistic like venture, um, which was a first for me. Uh, Cause I had gotten, I had gotten stuck like so many, particularly with the pop music that I had been working on uh, all my life until then. What can I make that people will go by? You know what I mean? That's yeah. stupid thing that artists do and and then and then i came this project came along and we said screw all that let's go make something that we love um and lo and behold that was the thing that actually other people began to experience as well Well, i think it's brilliant i've seen that happen so many times in music art like like mike and i are talking about his project in nashville about doing the whole like maybe a country americana it's like no Stay to what you love. Like like, like you say in this comment, I, I was reading down on I think your Spotify channel or the website. It's like things that we want to lay down and listen to. Yeah. Like if we're yeah. not going to lay down and listen to this music, right. I don't want to buy it. Right. Like he's always pushing me to, I mean, I write quite a bit. He's always pushing me. as like, well, Mike, if I get up there, it's going to be like Ray La Montaigne. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to go do a, a Prince album as much as I love his falsettos. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. so it's good. It's good to hear that. It's very refreshing. So, Tell us, take us through this project. I mean, so you get this project out, you get some attention, and I, and things just, you know, I didn't realize it. I went back to the discography, and I'm realizing I think the attention this thing's getting. Yeah. And it goes, I mean, you just go bang. You get to the the advent, I must find you. And then you mm-hmm. get to suddenly, there's a lot of music in there. And, and we've also, I realized I missed a couple. There's also the Christmas album. You, oh, that's you right. You guys did. And yeah, that was a couple years ago. Yeah, that was great. Like, I, I the... <laughs> I remember like listening to oh, Young Ocean's Christmas album. So I put it in, like I'm putting Charlie to bed one night. I'm listening to the and Silent Night comes on. And I'm like, 
oh my good like <laughs> silent night sounds awesome it's like it's it's just it's fantastic it's a great album but there's also the uh quarantine sessions album um oh, yeah. so good you want to talk about that How, like what what kind of spurred that that little adventure <laughs> well um well first I, I should just say like yeah i mean we've we've been able to put out a lot of music and and it's i've had I always feel like I, I want to just give some some credit to my my team and my players. Like I've had such an amazing like group of people that have. It's not just me. Like I write the songs, but like there's so many people that have have helped these things come to life. Like my uh, former manager, who I'm still really close with. Like he was a much as much a part of pushing this thing for years and years. And you know, uh, the producer that produces and mixes everything his name is mike beck he's up in new york he's just a huge part of it all um um yeah the quarantine stuff um i mean man like everybody else like i what was it march of this year where everybody's life got turned upside down seemed like overnight and uh it was funny being in nashville and and watching um all my friends who are artists like everybody basically got sent home from being on the road and, and we were, we we're all getting on the phone and being like, what are we going to do now? You know, should we write some songs? You know, um, <laughs> that's all we can really do. Yeah. Um, but the quarantine thing was just really simple. I just, I just thought, you know, as a discipline for, for myself and, and just as a way to kind of like be highly underproduced with like if if i if i have any sort of self-criticism about our records is that often they they've been I w- i'm not going to say slick but like they're very they're very particularly put together you know in the production and and that's you know that's on purpose of course yeah, um, surely. and but i i that's when i play music live that's actually not how i experience the music and i'm not really like a like a a perfect performer in any way. And I thought it'd be cool to just like, uh, share that vulnerability with people. Yeah. <laughs> so the quarantine sessions are literally just me. I mean, where I'm sitting right now in my studio, in my backyard, often waking up and like doing it like at like 9am and just one take and yeah. seeing what happened. We so, thought it was brilliant. It was cool. I mean, it's on our coffee house channel. I mean, it's like yeah. the the stripped cool. down version. And 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 something that was cool about it is some of the songs. Like, I don't know. Sometimes you listen to a song and you kind of miss some of the like what's being said. And there was one song. Oh man, I can't remember which off the top of my head it was. But it, like it was, it, it really kind of it it lent more to the lyric, like the lyric composition yeah. of the song. And I was like, oh my goodness. And I had to go back and listen to the original recording recorded version of it. But um, yeah, it's brilliant. It's well, great. I, I sat with Mike, and we, you know, we went through all of all of your stuff, and he brought up the quarantine sessions. I said, okay, and I for a second he had a post on his Instagram, and I thought it was actually him trying to do something. Not realized it was you guys. So was it? Yeah, yeah. Yesterday, yeah, I, I watched the video of one of the most recent. I said, I said, I've been around the music game a long enough. I said. Eric's got some tastings particular on what he wants on that production. It, it, you can tell. And it's a good thing, man. It's, yeah. it's a compliment because, yeah. I, you know, one of the, I think the things that made, at least for me, what stood out about Young Oceans and your guys' approach to music is one, yeah, it's full of biblical content. I mean, it just is. You're speaking strictly right, right, right from the verses in, in a sense. Um, yeah. But also just the, just the, the, the palette of how you deliver the music visually it's a totally different experience than most people are doing. And I always tell the guys and girls I work with, it's like, how do you make yourself stand out? If you love what you do, right? And you've got that old line that we've talked in the last episode. It's like, if you love what you do, be passionate about it, be the best you can at it. Like, just, yeah. just do, you know? And it, it, it's show, you're, you're emulating that, man. So that's, congrats to you guys on that. Yeah, so I, going into this last one, so we've got You Are Fullness. Um, and we've got a couple singles. You Are Not Far, Light of Your Love, and First Love. Yep. Yep, and those all just came out. Those are all new drops for you. Yeah, so that so this is this is the big project that I've been working on this year. Um, we were supposed to be in up in New York, which all my guys are back are still back in New York. Um, we had we had scheduled to record a new a new record, a new full length in April. <laughs> it was supposed to be like the first week of April, and it was going to be like. This is we're gonna get in a room. It's gonna be the most live record we've done to date. You know, like we were gonna really try to do like live tracking, and and it of course turned into the exact opposite of that. Because the <laughs> session got completely canned. You know, that was 
we certainly weren't going to go do anything in New York. New York was going crazy yeah. in April. Um, and so, but I'm really glad we pushed through because, because things are just, you know, it's, th this year is never ending. And obviously the, the, the U S is like the world know we're back to normal. So, um, we ended up just doing it all remotely. The drummer was kind of stuck in LA on another gig. And so he ended up doing his parts at a cabin by himself with mm. two micro, literally two microphones, wow. um, and, nice. which is cool. Um, I did all my, this is the first time I've produced, fully produced one of our records. Um, uh, we started here in Nashville with, with the vocals on this record, which is really interesting. Huh. That is interesting. Um, yeah. Partly just, I don't know, to try something different. Normally the vocals are last. And, and so we started with the vocals and that really made for a different shape of yeah. this record. Um, and luckily the other, the female singer Kaneen is here. And so we were able to do our stuff here. But everybody else did their did their parts in their bedrooms, you know. So it was a weird record, um, and I think we recorded fourteen songs. There'll be ten that there are, our songs are always way too long, so we have a <laughs> with trouble when it go to vinyl. There's, there'll be ten tracks on the vinyl. Um, the digital record will be twelve tracks, and then we'll have some extra B sides coming out next year as well. Awesome. That's that about January fifteen. January fifteenth. So for all you fans out there, Praiserhead music, you know the Praiser House music heads, and and those are just like music. I look. I, I'm not gonna go and buy probably Earthgrown's record, but I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna plug it. I'll buy Young Oceans. So you got a fan, <laughs> that's for sure. A little Vero oh. Beach fan over here. Um, oh. Guys, go to YoungOceans.com. Seriously, go check them, these guys out. They're unbelievable. Yeah. Um, it's it's it is not your what I I mean you could call it worship music you know but I love the when you, I went down to your wiki page you know I don't know who put this if this was you guys New World Alternative Worship Meditative does that sound about right yeah yeah I I don't know who put that either it's hard to get the, I don't know Wikipedia things just show up yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah people they, you know community edits but. I thought yeah. it kind of it kind of encapsulated that. But yeah. Check them out, youngoceans.com. dot um, so January fifteenth, the drop, the whole project drops January fifteenth. Yep, yeah, yep. super excited. Well, we're gonna have it on Praiser. We can't can't yeah. wait for that. I awesome. do have one one question. Um, so there was the the voices volume one. Will there be a voices volume two? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that. <laughs> unfortunately, we called voices volume one volume one, which necessitates a volume two. Yeah. <laughs> like back myself into a corner there. Um, yeah, we really hope to, um, that the, the, as you can imagine, well, the concept of voices volume one, if people don't know, was just young ocean songs sung by a, a cast of amazing, like really real singers in my mind, which is kind of fun. I don't really consider myself like a singer singer, um, which is kind of the fun of it. Um, but these guys were just incredible. Like Leland is, is singing over those tracks. Um, Harvest, uh, Harvest was on Harvest. there. She was so underappreciated. She's one of the best yeah. worship leaders in in the states. Like she's stunning, yeah. and she's so humble that she just she doesn't really care about promoting herself, which is why she's so good. Um, but um, yeah, we hope to do a, a number two. Um, it, it'll be it'll be obviously all new songs. Um, I think at this point, the working idea for volume two was that we'll do it next year. And then it'll be a lot simpler, like a lot more like in a room. Yeah. I hate to say acoustic, but like acoustic, you know, yeah. uh, and, and I, and one of the things that we're going to hopefully be able to pull up is it'll be, it'll be maybe like a live video record as well as an audio record. That'd That's my, great. yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. I, I really like the videos that you guys are putting out with these singles. Like oh, we were so watching good. them, just the one camera. Just kind of oh, yeah. constantly moving. I mean, they're it's yeah. just it's really a it's really a clean, classy look, and yeah. and the audio is fantastic. And I mean, it's just great. It's, yeah, it's it. This whole quarantine thing is like caused people to be this innovative on in how they produce stuff, and it's like there's great stuff coming out of this whole process. I mean, well, you were at the top of our list, man. I I always you know Mike and I talk about this, and you know I lead the team here for for Praiser, but at the, at the end of the day, it's like look when there's when people see competition, I see collaboration, right? And when, mm. when you're in like this this noise of like just stillness, I'm not talking about our faith and prayer time. I'm talking about what's going on politically and everything else going on. 
But it's like people just get like frozen. And you guys, like I said, move him off the list because you're working so hard in the midst of chaos. Yeah. And you're going to bring people light of hope. You know, yeah. like there's going to be something there that you're going to encourage people. And that was one of the things when I, like, I didn't know that I was even going to say that today until I watched that video yesterday of mm-hmm. your interview. Yeah. Um, and that was, that was special. That was like, I was like, man, I was like, <laughs> and then I turned to Mike, I'm like, has anyone ever told him he could be a great actor? <laughs> I was like, just come on, come on, Eric, just, just do it. So I want to talk about Nashville. So you, you got the, the Nashville was to, for a reset. It was really for you guys to have some rest. I mean, it was to, to yeah. get rid of that grind. Right. But, yeah. but you know, Nashville is a great place for music. So sure. how was, how has that been? And I, I'll have a question going back to the recording process of the new, um, the new project, You Are Fullness, dropping January 15. Mark your calendars, everybody. But what was that feeling like to come into Nashville? You had some folks there you knew. You come into yeah. town. It's like, all right, this is refreshing. Tell me about that process. Yeah, my manager at the time was here, a really close friend. Several songwriters um, and, and artists that, that actually had been in New York with us for years had already kind of migrated here. Sure. But that's been happening in Nashville for 40 years, but definitely in the last like five or ten Big time. LA and New York has just been losing so many, um, so many creatives to towns like Nashville. Um, and it's sadly, it's because of economics. Yeah. It's just in New York has become just a money town more than ever. Um, and so people just can't sustain it. So and Nashville just somehow keeps begrudgingly making room for all of us. Um, uh, <laughs> so yeah, for us, it was just, it was, but mostly it, like, it was a delight that this is a music town, and and certainly the Christian music industry is a is is a pretty small little family, and yeah. I knew lots of those people here and had some of those contacts, and there was some sense of like, yeah, maybe I'll go in and you know start doing the co-write thing, and I and I do some of that. I I do co-writes and I collaborate with other artists, and but like. That's not really my game. Like I, I'm not really out there on the scene trying to like move and shake in, in Nashville. I'm I'm a terrible self promoter. Um and and mostly this this move was for my family. Um and we had we had, had um we'd had kind of a dream that we never thought was gonna be attainable of just having a little house. Mm-hmm. And a, a whole nother story, but like we just kinda had a miraculous provision of this little house with this the studio that was was already built in the backyard, and kind of, cool. it's kind of a crazy prophetic process, and um, so we just knew that the answer was yes, um, and it was really hard to leave New York, but here we are, and um, and yeah, it's Nashville, especially for musicians, kind of tends to be like just like a like a place where you can have respite, you know. Yeah. Most of the artists here are coming and going all all year long anyway, you know, so it's yeah. cool. Yeah, that's a that's a cool thing, and I, I don't think it's crazy at all, man. I think that God was with you the whole time, bro. I agree. You yeah. know, seriously, and I think that's a cool thing, and that's one of the things that we always want our audience to know. It's like, I, I, and I, I'm going to say it, Mike, on the fourth episode, but spiritual punches. You know, we get, I call it a spiritual punch. It's like we're here, we were listening to Old Dominion one day, um, and it was just in this one song. I like those guys, you know. And yeah. they were playing a song, and Mike and I were talking about. So we got music in the background. You got we're talking about music plans, wrapping up our week, talking about launching this thing, and yeah, just like get emotional. It's like God's yeah. put us on this roller coaster, dude. I never thought I was gonna work one day in ministry, man. And mm. two years later, we're killing it. We got Eric Marshall from Young Oceans on on the podcast. <laughs> it's pretty pretty epic. We love Nashville. We're up there a lot. Um, big part of the GMA, Gospel Music Association, and the yeah. Dove Awards there. And uh, Mike recorded up there. And um, it's just, it's an incredible place. It's yeah. growing like leaps and bounds like no other. Where about Nashville, y'all? In East Nashville. Yeah. Which feels the most, felt the most like Brooklyn to us. So we were like, <laughs> yeah. Close to the airport, like all the construction going on. Yeah. 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 yeah it's- the hustle and bustle. Um, well, anyhow, do you have anything you want to speak to our audience about? We always like to leave, you know, our, our guests with words of encouragement. Is there anything that's on your heart lately? Anything you want to speak to? Anything it could be anything at all. You can even tell us a joke, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any jokes. Um, yeah, man. Um, one of the things that's been on my mind this year, and and it's amazing how the things that we feel, you know, dare we say, might be from the Lord, can so easily just leave our field of vision. You know, and like like the the most 
profound things that we encounter in life are often the hardest things to recall. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I was struck with this, with this idea this year. Um, and for years I've put even into, into these songs that we've been talking about a lot of, a lot of that classic psalmist idea of like, how long a Lord, how long will you stay silent? You know, when will you, when will you speak? When will you show me, you know, the, we were always looking for signs and, and that's natural. That's normal for humans to want our heavenly father, our real father to sort of interact with us. You know what I mean? Um, and then I had this thought this year, um, because we were all forced into, um, a type of silence, whether that was comfortable for us or not. Um, and, and ironically, as we're forced, all forced in this quarantine, the world got louder and louder and louder and messier. Obviously, as Americans, the politics has just been insane. You know, it's just been it's just been out out of control. I think is the best way to put it. Sure. Um, the the political rhetoric and and noise in this country. And and I had this thought recently, like, I thank God often for His silence. Mm, yeah. When we're just making such a freaking noise, like down here. You know, and he's just silent. Like if we can sit with that for a moment and, and, and just settle our, our souls for a moment, like, I think that we'll find that his, his silence isn't inaction. Yeah. It's not apathy. Somehow it's, it's, it's actually, it's actually the very healing thing that we need in the midst of our noise. So that's, that's even new to me. Wow. I've always been like a contemplative type where I, I love being alone almost to a fault. Um, but I'm, I'm, in, I'm appreciating God's kind of quiet, his quiet more than ever before. And maybe, maybe that's something that we're all being shown. Oh man. I think everyone needs to hear that with an exclamation point. It, it reminds me a little bit of like, like if, with with your kids, if there's a time when they're not doing something they're supposed to be doing, or they're acting up, and then the the parent just kind of gets silent and just like waiting, not 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 to chastise, but just to get their attention. And it's like that silence, like, whoa, dad's quiet. What's you know? And then, yeah, that's that's a really good way to put that. And it's like right now, the world at large, we're just like, in during that silent time, we're just like screaming all the louder and fighting and knocking mm-hmm. things over and. But that that there's that moment of silence, just to like, the father is like wanting to get his kids' attention, and I think that's that's beautiful. And I had never thought of that before. That's that's a really that's a really powerful statement. Well, cool. that is a statement yeah. that just needs to like, you know, like when we hear, I always tell Mike, like, you know, you go in the studio, do your thing, but make it as make the pitch range as wide as possible for a bunch of different ears out there. It's like that note that just ripples, mm. and it just needs to keep rippling, yeah. and don't yeah. let it stop. I hope yeah. people I hope people well earmark that moment that you had with us today yeah. in that because that was some of the things like what you just said man is like we talk about Jim Caviezel we're trying to get him on <laughs> and we talk about just how it, close he is to the Lord and that when you're when you meet people like an Eric or we have a friend Jim here and or Jim another Jim yeah. um, that you just want to listen because you know there's truth there and mm-hmm. and I'm not saying that like your way of saying it is better than anyone else that's close to God. But we're we're hearing it, and it's 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 a message. It's it's anointed for sure. Yeah, and I and I, I mean that, man. I really mean that, and that's why I'm. Thank you for doing what you do, Eric. Seriously, yep. like always know from like from your friends and hopefully your know, future brothers uh, in a sense that Mike and I like we support what you're doing. Like, don't stop what you're doing. Just keep on doing, man. Because there is a part of what you guys are creating that no one else is, and it needs to be there. Like yeah. you said earlier. You yeah. know, it, it really does. And so I want to encourage our audience just to go out to youngoceans.com. Uh, make sure you follow them. You know, you can subscribe to their YouTube, like them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. They're, they're there, Mike. They're everywhere. Yeah. Uh, Eric's out there. He says he's not a good self-promotion, but it looks like a pretty good job to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and follow them. You know, get involved with them. Yeah. Another thing you can do is go to youngoceans.com and check out their shop. Yeah. So, like, I'm a vinyl head. You guys have done a great job with vinyl. Very, yeah, very seriously, artistic. And so even if you don't like his music, you can appreciate the artwork that's on his albums. They're incredible. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, you got the paint uh, horses, this painted picture. You got the tree. I mean, it looks great. Yeah. It's just been a great job. We can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing this time with us today, man. Yeah, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for chatting about the music and helping it spread. I'm, I'm really honored. Yeah, man. We're gonna, we have some other things, too. We'll talk to you real quick or so our audience knows. So if you haven't checked out our YouTube channel, go to Praiser. Uh, I know, Eric, you guys know about Praiser. But if you look at on Praiser, you'll find the podcast, right? So there's the Praiser house. But we also have something called the Praiser Sessions. And it was an idea I had, you know, such a music head as a young kid. I loved like the big power vocals. I would scream Whitney Houston in the bathroom. Super annoying for my brother, I'm sure, but whatever. I wasn't gonna stop. So there was MTV Unplugged and then Praise, uh, then Spotify Sessions. And Spotify Sessions was just more about the focus of the story, and MTV Unplugged was about the music, right? And this acoustic setting. So we, I decided to mash the two ideas. So we've taken artists. Mike was one of them. Uh, we stripped down the song that we like. I don't know. It could be let's say first love for example and we interview you and we kind of talk it's not like this with a podcast just a short couple of questions and we put it together we would love to invite you to do a praiser session when things kind of clear up and, sure. and with the band that That'd we would lo- we would love that man so youngoceans.com mike you got anything else for eric eric's been this has been refreshing yeah man. it's been great man i i just thank you for coming on it's been it's been a, a pleasure talking with you and um man we're really looking forward to that album drop Thank you guys so much. It's yeah. been great. Setting yeah. set the bar, Eric. Setting yeah. the bar, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when we get to Nashville, we'll give you a buzz for sure. Yeah. Please do. Please right. do. Brother, yeah. God bless you, man, and the whole family, okay? All right. Bless Blessings, man. Seven. We'll see you. Wow. Yeah. Mike, that was incredible. Yeah, it was great. Just, you Good know, dude. you know, like when you and I have been around the world, and I, I, you get on and you're like, you meet people, and then you realize you just met somebody for the rest of your life. Yeah. Like that feeling. That's what Eric gives me. Yeah. And like, I know I joked with him about the whole, like, you know, like the movie thing and the voice. He's got a very stoic presence. Like, you know, it's like, yeah, got that. And, but that boy knows the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, and, and and we didn't get all into all of the, his, you know, upbringing in the church, but that boy, that boy knows the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of those guys that you just, you know, you just know he's, he's close to the Lord. I mean, people that, that, hang out with the Lord and have that closeness with them. They just like, it, it's not, you can't hide it. You know, that, that just comes through. It like emanates from their pores. You know, yeah. You know. Yeah. That's, that's kind of our go-to yeah. line there. And I think what's really cool is like, I, I appreciate, you know, I, I managed an artist named Han and, you know, I always call him like the Asian American Jack Johnson, for example, mm-hmm. dude, he does not promote anything. And Eric says he doesn't, but I love the way that they set up their platform. Yeah. It's very artistic. Uh, it's very, you know, particular in what they like. Yeah. Attention to details there. And they do that. Like, I want, I, I always want the website and the album art and the music to be of the person yeah. based on influence. Yeah, it definitely has its own, It's a, there's a, a specific brand there. And I mean, you look at a, a Young Oceans album and you know, oh, that's a Young Oceans album. Just because yeah. all the album art kind of has the same kind of a theme to it. You know, it's very well done. Yeah, it is. And, and folks, you can go to it. I mean, it's, I'm looking at it right now, youngoceans.com forward slash shop. We've got I Must Find You, Suddenly, um, the LP1, Advent to Christmas, so the Christmas album that you yeah. mentioned is there. It's a great album. Great it's album. Perfect time for, for, for the album. Perfect the time. In fact, do, get two of them, you yeah. know, and if you if you want, buy three or four. You got Give them to you know, friends or family yeah. or maybe even a worship pastor uh, in your own town mm-hmm. and check them out. I mean, they're there. I've already followed him today on Instagram, uh, forward slash Young Oceans. So we couldn't like that. But if you like what you hear, and like, guys, this is these are the kind of people we're gonna make that's gonna make this podcast. Yeah. Like you can listen to Mike all you want. You might laugh. You might turn us off. You might like not like us <laughs> or whatever. But you're gonna like the people we bring on yeah. because they're real. Look, they're close to the Lord. They make fantastic music. Yeah. I don't care if they're at the top of the charts or not even near a charts. Yeah. That's not what's important. No, it's. I mean that that that's not the that's not the focus. The focus is, I mean we're gonna we're gonna have great artists. On. I mean we're gonna have great interviews. We're gonna have people that sure. that, that you guys want to see. But at the at the end of the story, at the end of the line, it's like we're get we're down to the story. We're we're after the story. Like yeah, we're all you know. New Testament says we're we're living stones. So God's walking with each one of us, and there's a story going on. There's a story happening in yeah. each of our lives, and we want to get to those stories. And it's like. You know what? A, what an op, what an awesome opportunity to do that on a, on a podcast. On a podcast, yeah. and it's not like like we almost should have called this the Praiser Living Room. 
inside the Prazer house. Oh, let's think about that. Hmm. Only maybe took us 20,000 years to uh, get to the other yeah. name. Well, hey, you know, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a segue or some a type segue. of... Yeah. The Prazer living room. We're just sitting with a robe and feet yeah. up on the coffee table. Emulating our bobbleheads, yeah. perfect physique, yeah. um, and beautiful chiseled jawline. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, I did get back to my workout, you know, trying. Good. I sort of did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, eat, eat less. Yeah. <laughs> I, God, I still got so much. You know, we had Thanksgiving last week. Yeah. What a blessing to be able to give thanks not only to uh, to those around us but to the number one in our life and that's our lord savior jesus christ yep that was a big deal that was a quiet one for me i know we talked about it but it's funny you find yourself ham yeah ham <laughs> a little bit more ham yeah so the work out but that was that was a wonderful day a wonderful time excuse me with with eric today yep. um look forward to helping hey you know he said he was about the praiser session yep. i know he's going to go check it out and see if that's for him as the the travel kind of opens up a little bit. Uh, we'll maybe be we in can... Nashville soon. We'll be in Nashville I didn't, soon. I didn't know he was in Nashville. I thought he was I still in either. New York. I, I was... still did as yeah. well. Man, you know what? When we were there, we could have, we could have called him up. Been like, yo, Eric. But of course, he didn't know us from Adam. So but you like that hot chicken? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some of them hot wings. Let's get some of them hot wings. Justin Fratt, don't worry. We love you. <laughs> hey, Justin's going to be coming on here. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to get him on. As people don't know Justin, he um, was a worship uh leader at one point in his life, yep. um, long ago, as he would say, and he would he would kill me for talking about this. So Justin, I know you're watching, so uh, bet's on. And the the point I'm making with Justin is that he's coming on, and he's in Nashville, and he's he's a great advocate for the artist. Yeah. He's the director of operations for the GMAs. Yeah. Um, if you don't know Justin, and you're in this part of the world... He's just a cool guy. Yeah, he doesn't have to like, the music. The second you meet him, you're like... That guy is just—I just want to hang out with that guy. Well, dude, you got the invite, and we—we we, you know—we we teed it off with um, uh, the Children's Hospital Vanderbilt, yeah. Carol Monroe, yeah, and that was a big deal. And you were on the Ryan Seacrest, where we did an interview there together, yeah. and you played, and he came. He came out, yeah. He, and now he's in the video. You can see him in the video. He's in the video. Yeah. So if you go to Mike Rathke's YouTube channel, yeah, you can see that interview um, of us at Ryan Seacrest Studios at the. Vanderbilt Children's yeah. Hospital. He's what a just, fantastic thing. Yeah. But yeah. And he came out to your showcase, too. And he did, yeah. He and Jackie. He and he's Jackie. just a cool guy. I mean, I mean, really, he's like one of those guys, like, the second you meet him, you're, you know, we were having lunch that one time at that, what was that place in Nashville? Hamburger joint or barbecue joint or something? It was a, a hot wing place. Was it? A hot I wing? can't remember which one it is. It's not, it's not Prince's. It it's kind not, of looked like a gas station. and looked yeah. like a dirty gas station. Right by the, the hospital. Was we'll, we'll, we promise we'll get it right and we'll, yeah, we'll send you we'll a, give them a good plug magnet or something. After I just said that they looked like a dirty <laughs> gas station, maybe, maybe we should just never mention it again. <laughs> and fail. No, not at all. No. The reason I bring up Justin is I want to introduce Eric to Justin. Yeah. I think it would be a good thing for him. Yeah, for sure. The, that's been yeah. such a good community. I know, you know, Justin knows the. the their music it would be cool for them to hook up very much yeah. so and, and to go over to his, i think and i think eric would dig their office it's a cool little office right there by the uh other restaurant <laughs> yeah, the, the other one that we frequent all the time that's yeah. uh, very good it's good it is good yeah um i can't think of the name of that I one so i've only been in nashville like twice two three times so i and shame on me i've been there too many times to think and i i don't know what your problem is i, I just say i know what my problem is <laughs> It's that day. It's it's. I'm it's just kidding, man. Two days coming out of uh, it's of the holiday. Still turkey brain, man. Still a turkey brain. I tell you, no. It's it. Look, we're so blessed, and we want to encourage you, uh, those that you know are listening, maybe for the first time, or some of the, you have that been with us since the beginning. We're only in episode four, so you haven't missed yeah. a lot. But that's also like four hours. So you got to go back. You know, it's going to be a long study session. You got you got your weekend planned for you. You have your weekend planned, and we'll actually we 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 want we want you listening and watching to have fun with us and. Yeah. And laugh and look you might cry with us at some point i hope i told eric today about the spiritual punch i think that's going to be like a theme like yeah. we're gonna have to end up getting like a punching bag or like a, yeah. something that's called the spiritual I, i'm punch. picturing a, like an animated gif of a you know an animated okay uh, we can we can I, do I that greg can we work on that Greg, you can get that um <laughs> but you know i i really want people to enjoy this i hope that people learn from this yeah i hope they're 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 their desire to know jesus grows from our voices yeah and that we're not just out here talking about, you know, music because we think it's fun and cool. No. It, that's our passion. Like, like yeah. making music and helping music get out there. Like, that's our pass. That's our careers. Yeah. You know? But also to, like, bring people in to know Jesus more. I mean, you know more about Scripture than I probably ever will. No. And he says, he says no, but he knows. And I'm grateful for that to have a brother who teaches me and I teach you and other things, yeah. whatever. 
but I want to be able to keep, keep giving that to our audience. So well, that's that's what this whole thing's about. Like, because it's like you talk with a guy like Eric or Jeremy, and it's and it's just like the the life experiences. Like, we're all living stones. And yeah. It's, there's there's that there's that reality of like my story is different than your story. Your, you know, Eric's story is different than my story. Yeah. But we as we talk and we commune together, like those stories come out, and we see God's faithfulness. We see God's provision. Amen. We see God's protection in lo- in our life, and it's like. We're encouraged and we're edified and we're built up as we commune together. I mean, well, that's, he, that's the whole point of the body of Christ. We like we spur each other on, you know. And that's a great comment to say because, as the living word, the Bible, you know, pick up the Bible and read it. Yeah. Like, don't be like me and go tumble and say I'm a Christian, I'm saved, and then you're just not reading, and then you finally get into more of it. Like, just do it now, especially if you're younger. I mean, if you're older, it doesn't matter. There's never a, a, a wrong time to start reading it, no. but. You know, what you say, like living stones, the living word, the living expression, the living conversation, the living commune. Like when we got into that conversation and he's like, you know, it's kind of crazy to go to Nashville. I said, I wasn't crazy, Eric. Yeah. God knew that thing was going on the whole time. He was with you the whole time. And he just smiled, you know, and it's like, excuse me, people remind me of that and they remind you of that. And we remind him and he reminds us. Yep. You you can't have it. You can't have any other way. Nope. And so the other thing, too, is you're going to learn about great musicians, new music you haven't found. But we're also going to encourage you to go check out Praiser. You know, that is our sponsor. So yeah. got to say it. You got to subscribe to our podcast to know what's going on. Yeah. It lives on our Praiser YouTube channel. It's a main playlist, the Praiser House right there. So it's easy to find. So if you get lost and you're like, well, Praiser House or the Praiser Cows, what was it called? Yeah. Just go to YouTube and go to Praiser and you can watch us. Um, but you can also listen to it on your drive, driving to work, when you're working out, whatever. Um, we're here for you. We support you. So make sure to please subscribe and get yeah. those notifications. But do you have anything else to tell our audience? Say this has been a fantastic episode. Yeah, it's been great. No, I don't. I don't think I have anything else. Well, one more time for for Eric Marshall, ladies and gentlemen. I was like in my head, like I heard a clapping. You know, like <laughs> some of these radio programs, they like, yeah, yeah. Everybody goes, yeah, whoa. But we'll, we'll bring that in in post. <laughs> yeah, we, we will. Mike, Mike, I don't want it, but Mike's going to do it on purpose just to make me laugh. And if you want a good laugh, you want a really good laugh, go watch our trailer or the episode one, any of the, any of the episodes. <laughs> I know Mike's Mike, they, we I, did we, that for like, what, 20 minutes this morning. We, don't tell our secrets, Mike. <laughs> yeah. uh, so go to the – there's a little dial, a little sprocket, you know, when you hit play on YouTube. Drop down and drop it to half speed. Oh my goodness! Point five, point five on the speed. Oh gosh! Okay, it's ridiculous. it is. I, I mean, it's belly. It, you, we, you, you we, will, you'll get abs. If yeah. you don't work out, you'll get abs. Yeah, I mean, if you skip your workout this morning, <laughs> you can watch that and you get a good ab workout. I, we cracked up this morning watching that. We, we <laughs> <laughs> it started because someone introduced that to us when it was a video of a newscast. Yeah, and. They they turned out and it was like we had had a little too much to drink, <laughs> but we're not gonna do it because things are special. Oh my goodness, that was it, so, it was a riot. We, we, we got to do it. Skip it. Th- well, and we were looking for a, a point and an edit that was that That's we right. needed to fix, and uh, so we're scrolling along real slow, and then it's like, oh man, that was hilarious. Let's watch that again. <laughs> and I was like, hey Mike, you got you got a couple minutes. A couple minutes turned into a little bit longer. It needs yeah. to be. Nonetheless, um, do do check out Eric Marshall yeah. and Young Oceans. So youngoceans.com. You're going to watch this episode. I know it. Tell us about it, what you think. Yeah. Tell us where we're, we're getting it wrong. Yeah. Tell us where we're getting it right. Or don't che- tell us anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> Check out their social. I mean, um, also, we, d- we didn't mention when we were on there with Eric, but he's also got his quarantine session release on Bandcamp. Oh, so and so, I mean, it's not, you, you know, you can't get that on iTunes. And nope. the only place it's available is on, the, on their Bandcamp. Great point, so, Mike. Young Oceans, uh, Bandcamp. Uh, quarantine session. It's like a stripped down version. Just Eric sitting in his in his studio, one guitar, a couple mics. Yep, great, great songs. And, yeah, uh, you can also hear that on on the on the Coffee House channel. And go ahead and like and favorite and add to a playlist. First love. Yeah, that song is unreal. And yeah. then he did that video. So make sure you share that with your friends and and family on social media too, because the artistic approach to First Love. It, it, that's what I love about his his ability to write and titles. It's like first love, and you immediately think, "Oh, that girl, that boy, that broke my heart, or whatever." Yeah. Whatever. No, no, no. That's not what it's about. And go and read the lyrics, and do watch the video. They have yeah. one shot that pans the whole tent. And they've done that for all three of their singles. They Unbelievable. Have a, a lyric video, and then a live performance, kind of acoustic video, yeah. and then the uh, actual song video. So I mean, they're all three of their singles. They have that same 
and, and he says he's not very good at oh, <laughs> yeah. promoting okay. so, you know, social media, but he's they're, they're doing a great Eric, job. Eric, you're doing a great job. Really man. good stuff. Yeah, g- don't give yourself some credit. And um, I like that humble attitude. Yeah. That's that's what it's about. You know, it's like the late Keith Green. Yeah. You know, and oh, Lord, you're beautiful. Yeah. When I'm doing well, help me not to seek a crown. There you go. And uh, in fact, I told someone that this morning here at the office, and it's like, man, we're just knocking it. Like, God's giving us favor and grace, and he's, you know, that story I've told you in another episode about, you know, holding his hand and yeah. laying it all out before me. Um, this is just like that for yeah. these guys. And the other thing is to be sure that on January 15th, the You Are Fullness, the entire thing, and you heard him say it, that they couldn't get all 12 tracks. Yeah on the vinyl so 10 on the vinyl 12, 12 on the 12 digital on, but if you're like me and then some b-sides as well because he said he recorded right. 14 songs it's, well this has been it this is the praiser house i am brandon bailey mike rathke here and you heard it with eric marshall from young oceans youngoceans.com and subscribe and check out the praiser house we'll see you next episode can't wait right. yep, see love you y'all the praiser house.